Have you ever needed to move something smoothly between two points, or maybe rotate an object over time? The most common way that we do this is with a function called lerp. In this video, we're gonna take a look at what is lerp, when should we use the variant slurp, and how to implement a variety of kinds of lerping. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Lerping is something that's incredibly common in video game development. There's all kinds of uses for this. We can talk about lerping positions, rotations, colors, basically anything that has a value can be changed over time. That's when we're gonna talk about using a lerp. Specifically today, we're gonna to look at really the fundamentals. There are more complex ways that you can do lerping that we're not gonna cover in here, but today, just if you don't know what lerp is, it stands for linear interpolation. And whenever we're talking about rotations, usually we wanna use something called slurp, which is not what you do with your food. Instead, it is spherical linear interpolation, which sounds kind of weird because you wouldn't think spherical and linear work together, but this diagram shows you it does. Interpolation is just a way for us to say, if I know this point and this point, we're going to interpolate or figure out the points in between based on a time parameter. If we take a look at mathf.lerp, what it does is has a float value at the beginning and a float value at the end. It then takes a time parameter that should be between zero and one. You can think of that as the percent to complete that we're going to interpolate on. So if, we have, if I'm going from zero to one, for example, and I'm using zero to one on the time, these values will be the same. If I say 0.5 is the time, then 0.5 is halfway in between 0 and 1, so that'll be the value that it returns. That's all really that lerping is, is picking a value between two points based on how close you want to be to the start or the end point. In this video, we're going to take a look at a variety of different kinds of lerp. We're first going to use a fixed time vector 3 lerp, a fixed speed vector 3 lerp, which I think is a little bit weird, but some people do it this way. We're going to look at quaternion lerp and quaternion slurp. We're also going to look at a way to make an object rotate at a fixed speed, which isn't technically a lerp, but it behaves very similarly to a lerp. So we're going to add in that one. And we're also going to take a look at how to lerp colors. As always with all of my videos, the GitHub repository is available for you. So you can download the entire project, run it on your local machine, make tweaks, play with it, see how it does it work. Link in the description. Feel free to check it out. Before we go any further, I want to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Every one of you is helping this channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people, and that means more people are making their game dev dreams become a reality. If you want to help support that mission, you can go to patreon.com slash academy, choose whichever tier you're most comfortable with. You'll start getting some cool perks like getting your name up here in the section and getting a voice shout out starting at the awesome tier. Speaking of those awesome supporters, I have Raphael, Andrew Bowen, Gerald Anderson, Autumn K. Paul Barry and Matt Parkin. I am so grateful for your support. Thank you. Let's look at vector three lerping first. This is one of the most common methods of lerping when we want to move one object from one location to another location. And there's two ways we're going to look at how is that lerp possible to do. The first one is with a fixed time. That means that it will always take the exact same amount of time for this object to move from point A to point B. We control how long this takes by adjusting the lerp speed. Since we're always going from time zero to time one, lowering the lerp speed below one will make it take longer than one second and making it above one will make it take less than one second. You'll see if I move these two points farther away from each other, this cube starts moving faster between them because we're using the fixed time. Right now it's taking exactly one second for it to travel from the left point to the right point and from the right point to the left point. The way that we do this is define a time, usually from zero to one because a lerp accepts zero to one as the time parameter. You pass in the start position and the end position. Usually when we're lerping positions, we want to update every single frame. So with the code that you see here, this is one of the most common ways to do this in a coroutine. You can also do this on update where you just don't need to do the yield return null anymore. The second way that we can do lerping is a little bit weird to me, but a lot of people do lerp this way and that's lerping with a fixed speed. Lerping with a fixed speed means that we're moving this object at a fixed number of units per second. You do this like this, where we're gonna take a distance, check the remaining distance, and while the remaining distance is greater than zero, we're going to move from the start point to the end point with one minus remaining distance over the distance, updating the remaining distance minus some move speed times the time dot delta time. And that's one thing that whenever we're talking about using lerping, we almost always are using time dot delta time to make sure that we're modifying our movement by the amount of time that has elapsed since the last frame, because we are updating this position or rotation or whatever we're updating 
every frame. And I say lerping in this fashion is a little bit weird to me because you don't actually need to use a lerp to achieve this. You can use translate, for example, on the transform to get the same result, or just increment the position by some fixed move speed in some direction and you get the same result. So using a lerp in this fashion, maybe it makes more sense to you and you can do it that way. There's nothing wrong with doing it this way. Just for me, the fixed time one makes a little bit more sense than the fixed speed. So you can see if I increase the movement speed, this cube will start moving faster. But if I increase the distance between the two spheres that we have here, you will see that it does not start moving faster. One use case I do like for lerping with a fixed speed is if we're going to move like a bullet trail with a raycast bullet to show that visualization. Moving at a fixed speed ensures that the bullet looks consistent in how it travels, whereas if you used a fixed time to lerp that position, whenever the player shoots close to them, they'll see a really slow bullet trail, and whenever they shoot really far away, it'll be a really fast bullet trail. But the same principle applies that you could do the exact same thing, just moving that bullet trail every frame using translate, move towards, or simply adding vector three to that position. The next thing we'll look at is slurp and lerp with a quaternion. This cube on the left is lerping to keep it going in a circle, and the one on the right is slurping. That's spherical lerp. And you can see there's a pretty big difference between how these two spin. The one on the left kind of slows down as it gets near the 180 degree point, and the one on the right has a smooth, consistent turning. Both of these are using the exact same code, going over at the exact same time. One is just using lerp, and one is using slurp. My general recommendation is that you should use slurp for the rotation, unless you particularly want this effect that the lerp is doing on the left, where it kind of speeds up and slows down as it rotates. One final thought here is we cannot quaternion.lerp to something that's more than 180 degrees away. If we try to do that, it's going to choose the shortest rotation path to get to that target rotation. For example, if you wanted something to turn from quaternion identity to quaternion 270 going the long way around, you need to first go from 0 to 180, and then from 180 to 270 degrees. Using lerp, you're gonna see this same behavior where it will go kind of slow at the beginning, speed up in the middle, and then slow down again at the end, going to 180 degrees. And then you'll see it again, speed up in the middle, going from 180 to 270, being slow at the in and outs. If you wanna understand better the difference between lerp and slurp at a technical level, I've included a link to the Wikipedia page describing what slurp is, and they talk about how does it work relative to a direct lerp. The next lerp I want to talk about isn't really a lerp, but it is a way to make something rotate over time using a fixed speed. So much like we were talking about before with the vector three lerp with a fixed time versus fixed speed. The last one we were just looking at was lerping with a fixed time. To lerp with a fixed speed on a quaternion, there's this function called quaternion.rotate towards that we can use where you pass in the start rotation, the end rotation, and then a step or a time that we're incrementing much like we did with lerp, the quaternion.rotate towards works very similarly to a lerp, it's just not really called a lerp, and it works on a rotation amount instead of a time parameter. So you'll see that on the lerp manager here, I've set the lerp speed to be 100 instead of the one it was at before to get this kind of rotation. The way you use this is the exact same as a lerp though, we're still incrementing the step by a lerp speed and time.delta time, it's just that your lerp speed has to be significantly higher because we're talking about a degree delta instead of a time parameter. You'll see that this one behaves similarly to the slurp where it's going smoothly, it's not slow down as it gets close to one of the degrees or something like that. So this is how you can smoothly rotate an object if you want to move at a fixed speed instead of having to play with the time to get to the speed that you want. The next one we're going to talk about is a color lerp. This works the exact same as all of the other lerps. All lerps follow the same pattern of we have a start point, an end point, and then a time parameter where we will go from the start to the end based on that time where time is zero to one, right? So for a color, we start with a color and a target color and we'll just go between those two. In this case, I'm using that default orangey color that I had at the beginning and going to black and then back again to the orange. For this particular case, I'm modifying the vertex colors of this cube to change this color. Because I'm using this Pro Builder cube, you can change the colors of those meshes by modifying the vertex colors for this mesh. These are really convenience methods because if we take a look at the color, for example, what we could do is lerp between the RGBA values of the color and get the same result as doing color lerp. But it's a lot nicer to be able to just do color.lerp, pass in the start end color, and let it figure out how to do the rest of it. Now, we only talked about the fundamentals in this, so we're talking about strictly linear interpolation, nothing fancy where we can have like easing in and out curves. That's something I would call more advanced lerping. I'll have another video later about that. So depending on when you watch it, it'll probably be over here at the end of the video. But if you're watching this when it's brand new, 
I don't have that video yet. If you got value out of this video and you better understand how to use glurping, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. There's new videos posted every tutorial Tuesday, and I'll see you next week.